Welcome once again to explainingcomputers.com. A couple of videos back, I took a look at the CHIP, the $9 single board computer from a next thing company, and which really invites comparison with the Raspberry Pi Zero. And so in this video, I'm doing a head to head. I'm going to look at the specifications of the two machines. I'm going to see what it costs to build a working system. I'm going to run what I think are some very revealing performance tests. Right, so here we have the chip and the Raspberry Pi Zero, and they're both tiny little computers. And to really just to stress how small they are, let's just bring in for a second a standard size Raspberry Pi Model B, which really highlights you know, how small the, uh, the chip is, how small the, the Raspberry Pi Zero is. Anyway, let's consider their specifications. First of all, they're both based around a system on a chip, and on the chip itself, this is a all winner R8, which has got a, a 1 gigahertz ARM Cortex A8 CPU and a Mali 400 GPU. And then if we compare that to the Pi Zero, the Pi Zero has got a 1 gigahertz again Broadcom BCM2835 system on the chip. It's actually under the chip, you can see here. This is the RAM chip on top. The uh, system on the chip is actually stacked under that. And that's got a, let's say, a 1 gigahertz CPU and it's got a video core 4 GPU. So in terms of system on the chip, in terms of graphics power, these things are fairly similar, both running one gigahertz. You could make an argument that the, uh, the Mali 400 GPU on the chip is a little bit more powerful, but we'll actually see that in practice. I'll do some very practical um, video tests with these a little bit later in the video. In terms of RAM, I've mentioned the RAM on the Pi is sitting here on the top. It is, that's a 512 megabytes of RAM. And on the chip, we've got our 512 megabytes of RAM underneath. So identical in terms of the RAM. In terms of storage, on the chip, we've got four gigabytes of onboard storage. And we could therefore say that that's better than the Pi because the Pi has got no onboard storage. The Pi has got a slot for a micro SD card, which you have to occupy to actually have any storage at all on the board. And I think you can play this one either way. It's clearly good that you can buy the chip with the storage there of four gigabytes, and some chips you can apparently get upgraded to eight gigabytes, although that still seems to be a bit up in the air exactly how that works. On the Pi though, you can add any size of storage you want. So although you've got to add your card in, you could actually put out a 32 gigabyte card, a 64 gigabyte card if you really wanted something like that. So I think the Pi has got the advantage to some respects that you can add your own storage and you can add as much as you want and expand it, whereas on the chip, yes, you get the storage with it, but actually you, you can't alter that. In terms of connectivity and, and outputs of things, both these things are powered via a USB micro connector providing five volts of power, which is on, on the boards here. And there's also a separate power connector here on the chip for a LiPo battery. You could buy the power from the LiPo battery, it's not quite as straightforward, potentially. In terms of video output on the chip, you've got a composite video output and indeed audio output here directly on this 3.5 millimeter connector. Whereas on the Pi, if you want to use composite video and audio, you have to actually solder on some pins and use them. You start there here, down here, we've got the, the pins for, for, for that. In terms of HDMI output, the Pi has got a mini HDMI on the board, whereas there isn't HDMI on the chip. And I think having onboard HDMI is a big plus for the Pi. In terms of USB connectivity, they've both got one USB port, a full-size USB port on the chip, and a micro USB on the Pi. So they're probably the chip a little bit of an advantage because you haven't got to use an adapter. In terms of networking, on the chip, we've got onboard Wi-Fi, onboard Bluetooth, this module here. Pi hasn't got onboard Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, so big advantage to the chip onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Finally, it's worth noting, you've got GPIO, general purpose input output pin capabilities on both of these computers. You can see the headers here on the chip. On the Pi, you've got the, the uh, pads ready to take something. You have to add your own GPIO by soldering in something like this, or indeed you can solder in an, an angled one like that. So the Pi can have GPIO, but you've got to do a bit of work yourself, as I've shown in a previous video. Right, the one thing I didn't mention in my last segment was price. And here, the Raspberry Pi Zero is at $5, the chip is $9. 
And therefore, given that the builds are fairly evenly matched, as we've seen, you, you've got a wireless networking on the chip that gives it the advantage. You've got HDMI on the Pi that gives it the advantage. You might therefore say, well, given that the Pi Zero is about half the price of a chip, the Pi Zero has to win in this head to head. However, I don't think that would be a fair thing to say because to use these computers, the price of the computer itself is only a small part of the cost of a final system. For a start, you're going to need a power supply, something like, like this, say a micro USB power supply, the lead on, on the end there giving you five volts. You might own one of these for things like charging your mobile phone, but it could well be the adapter you've got hasn't got enough power to run these boards really well. So you might have to buy a power adapter and that'll cost you probably a good five dollars. Even more significantly, even if you've got a power adapter, you will need certain accessories to actually use these boards. So for example, for the chip, you're going to need a lead to connect it to your television or your monitor. A lead like this with a 3.5 millimeter TRRS connector, tip ring ring sleeve connector. And these are not a standard lead. So you probably have to buy this lead. Uh, they, lots of them come wired in the wrong way. You could put the wrong lead in and do some damage. This sort of lead will cost you $5 from the next thing company who make the uh, actual chip chip itself and if you if you buy one elsewhere it'll still cost you that amount of money so you've, you've got to add really i think five dollars to the cost of a chip in most circumstances to make the thing usable in terms of the uh, the pi zero you're going to have to have a micro sd card this is rather a good sandisk one but you're going to have to have some sort of micro sd card to actually install your operating system and programs on Almost certainly, you're going to want one of these. This is an adapter from a full-size HDMI to a, the a mini HDMI, which you'll use to plug in here on, on the board. I'm going to assume you've got an HDMI lead because if you've got an HDMI monitor, you must have had, or television, you must have it plugged into something, so you must have a full-size HDMI lead, but you will need the adapter. And also for the Pi, you probably need one of these, which is an adapter from uh, the uh, micro USB you've actually got on the board to a full size USB. So I'll put that in there as well. So effectively here, we've added on about $5 to the price of our $9 chip, and we must have added on about $9 in terms of a year, the, the basic SD card and these adapters to the Pi. So both of these computer systems are now up to about $14 in terms of getting, getting them working, or closer to $20 if you add in your power supply. But it actually, I think, goes a bit further than that in terms of the fact that if you're gonna use a Raspberry Pi Zero for many things, you will, I think, want it networked. Not for all projects, but often you're gonna want Wi-Fi on a board like this, and therefore you need something like this, which is a Wi-Fi dongle, and this is a Wi-Fi dongle, a nice one from Broadcom, which has got USB hub in it. And I think you'd want a USB hub because if you just plug in a Wi-Fi dongle into here via this adapter and you, you just use that, you've filled your one USB port, therefore you are going to want a hub. And indeed for both of these boards, you might be adding in USB hubs to get more connectivity. Well, I see we won't need that for now, but one of these, when you can get hold of one, these are not easy to get hold of, it's going to cost you probably a good sort of 10, probably more like $15. Similarly, when we look at the chip, I think running from a composite connector, yes, it worked. If you're playing games on it, it might be all you want. But for more serious computing and coding and things, I think you're going to want one of these, which is a dip, which gives you a full-size HDMI connector on the dip. This goes on top of a thing like this. I won't plug it in, but it goes in basically like that. And that allows us to have HDMI from your chip. So effectively, the chip, we've added a $15 for there as well. So what I've effectively said here is that both of these systems are now coming up to costing about $30 or about $35 if you've actually got to add in your power adapter. So that doesn't mean these aren't both fantastic little computers. They are, they're amazing value. You can buy a computer for $5 and $9, but I don't think you can simply say, Pi is half the price, therefore it's a better bet because the total system cost is in many ways about the same on, on each computer, although it does depend exactly what you're doing with them. On top of that, you're also going to need keyboard and a mouse and things. You might have those, of course. You might have a Bluetooth keyboard and, and, and mouse you can use with the chip, or you might want to get a combined device like the, the Rye I've been using, which gives you one connector for both a, a mouse type thing and a keyboard. And again, that's extra cost. And of course, on top of that, you might want cases for these things, you might want other accessories. So do bear in mind total system cost when you're making a comparison of a, any single board computers. 
Right, I thought we should see how these two computers work in practice, so we'll do some performance tests. I've got two tests to do here. As you can see, the chip is running equipped with its HDMI dip, and the Pi Zero is equipped with a micro SD card, a USB adapter, an HDMI um, adapter to its uh, mini HDMI socket, and the Broadcom Wi-Fi dongle, and they're both connected to the, the Rai keyboard device. So here I am on the chip desktop, and what I'm going to do in the first test is to use a link which is going to launch the default web browser on the machines, which is uh, Chrome on the Pi Zero and Firefox on the chip, and it's going to launch that browser, and then it's going to go to my YouTube videos page. So this is a test of how long it takes to load in a browser and to go to a web page. So I will kick things off. I'll zoom this down so we can see things on screen. See, so we've got both computers side by side. And I'll click things off. I'm using the uh, menu to click things off on the chip because you can't see when you've clicked on something on the chip, but you can when you launch from menu. But anyway, they're both going along. And uh, how are they doing? The Pi Zero's got to a browser first, but the chip will get there, I would hope. Um, will it get there? Eventually, yes, it will. Yes, the chip has now also got a browser up. Neither has got YouTube there. Of course, Wi-Fi is on board on the chip. Wi-Fi is coming from the dongle on, on the Pi Zero. And anything doing a web load, of course, is subject to internet speed and things. But uh, I think this is a reasonable test. Oh, in fact, the chip has won. Look, it actually got up and it's almost finished. Yes, 34.7 seconds to finish off. The Pi Zero is still loading things in. And of course, it'll be using processor power to decode those images. And it's still going and it's it looks like it's just about there, but in fact it isn't. It's still trying to load in some, some data. Now, this of course could be just one of those things in terms of getting data from, from YouTube to finish off the page load. But uh, I think we can say with some certainty here, the chip, it takes longer to load in the browser than the Pi Zero, but the chip did actually manage to process the data from the web page faster. I think we'll just uh, speed on to let the Pi Zero actually come to the full end of the page load. And there we are. The Pi Zero has finished 99.3 seconds to complete the page load uh, versus, what, 34.7 on the chip. Not a totally fair comparison, but, but there's no doubt that the, uh, the chip, I think, won that test. Right, for my second test, I'm going to check out video playback, specifically video playback of a local 720p 600 frame MP4 video file, which is loaded onto both systems. So again, I'm going to launch it from a link on the desktop, and it'll launch in the default video player, which is the uh, GNOME M player on the chip, and it's going to be using OMX player on the Pi. So again, we will uh, let the uh, screen uh, go down so we can see both things side by side, and we will launch things off with the uh, menu on one and just clicking on the Pi, and they're going, and uh, Oh, the Pi's got to video in 2.6 seconds, and it's playing back the video absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that playback at all. No frames being dropped, normal speed. Obviously, you're seeing it shrunk down, but it's uh, playing fine. The chip has got there. It took 12.8 seconds to launch a package. We've got a theme here. The chip, and I've found this on lots of tests, is it takes longer to get packages running. But far more significantly here, the chip is playing the video much slower. It, is, it isn't stuttering, it's playing it smoothly, it's just playing it slowly. Now, I'm sure there must be settings I could change in the package on the chip to actually get drop frame playback so it played at the right speed, but stuttering, but uh, that's not what it's doing by default. So here, on both occasions, and I've restarted the Pi Zero to give you a good comparison there, on both occasions you can see video being played by the defaults. There, look at those side by side. There's no comparison as to the Pi Zero is playing that absolutely fine, the chip is going, Jung, 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 slowly getting through it. Um, and the Pi Zero, once again, is finishing off. I'm sure as I, said, I, I could adjust video settings here, but what, what you're looking at in both occasions is video playback in the default video player on the system, with the chip having got a clean copy of its operating system before I started this test. The Pi Zero had a clean copy of the new Raspbian Pixel desktop before I started the test. So this is the out of the box, what happens on video playback on the same file. I'm just wondering now, will the Pi Zero manage to play the file three times in the time it takes the chip to play it once? It, it might, hadn't it? You never know. The chip is, oh, the chip's about to leave. Look, the robot's getting ready to leave. 
I must get back to that robot in another video, will do fairly soon, but no, no, I think the Pi Zero is going to make it, isn't it, three times before the chip gets off screen. There we are, without doubt the Pi Zero wins the video playback test. Both the chip and the Raspberry Pi Zero are amazing low-cost single board computers and offer us the kind of miniature computing power we couldn't have dreamt of 10 or 20 or 30 or more years ago. Now, which one is best has of course to depend on, to some extent, what you want to do with a device. You know, there's no doubt that the chip is better if you want onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and that the Pi is better if you need the onboard HDMI. Final thing to say though, is that the, the thing I haven't mentioned so far is that of support and, and this community that goes around the computers. And there's no doubt that right now, there the Raspberry Pi Zero has to win because there's been over 10 million Raspberry Pis sold. There's a lot of support available online, in books, in videos, all that kind of stuff. So if you're new to single board computing, I think your best bet is to go still with the Raspberry Pi. Having said that, there's no doubt the next thing company have done a great job getting the chip to where it is. There's not just a chip, there's all kinds of other products linked to it. And I might look at some of those on my channel in the future if, if you want me to. And they've also done a good job, I think, of putting up support to the level we've already got it. We can't be too dismissive of new entrants to market because of support, because of course it will build over time. And I think the chip is going to build into a very useful and viable platform. But now that's it. For another video, if you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.